Good morning. Welcome to my home. Welcome to the space that God gave me and my husband Richard to be in. I am Penny Nelson. <laughs> Welcome. So glad you're here. Today is Wednesday. Let's put, did you need to see the date? Can you see it? It's Wednesday, September 17th, 2022. And it is 1020 in the morning. And on Wednesdays, well, I don't do it every Wednesday, I have to admit, but I'm doing it today. So today is a um, learn to pray video, but it has a mission focus today. So I've introduced who I am, and I think the rest of it, well, why would you want to do a mission? We're going to talk about that today. But the first point of the video, you know, it's hard to even sit down and do a video with you. Oh, you're going to need, there's some things that you're going to need. For our time together because this is just supposed to be you and me and the Lord Jesus Christ my master and savior and um, it's kind of a learning and teaching thing so thank you so much for stopping by to hear me talk on and on you might you probably need at least 20 minutes you probably want some earphones or you want some privacy you might want to listen to this before you go to bed I don't know I don't know you might want to listen to it while you're by yourself because the point is for me to show you or demonstrate how to have a devotion, which is the first thing we're going to be doing. Actually, the first thing I'm supposed to be doing is reading the scripture, but I'm going to explain what we're doing before we do what we're doing. So the purpose of this video is for you and I to practice having a quiet time together. And a quiet time is communicating with the Lord Jesus Christ or with God or I don't know what you... I call him Jesus, so... You can, you can start somewhere and get to know him. Um, I'm talking to Jesus. They were talking to Jesus. I was talking to Jesus. Okay, so um, how you communicate with the God, the one true God, the King, the Lord of all things, the master of death, <laughs> Jesus, that, that, that one, is you listen. <laughs> you listen two ways. You can listen with your mind and with your with who you are, and you also can listen to his word, the Bible. That's why we read the word, the Bible, because God has left us his word. So we would want to know what he says. And the Bible is enough for us to understand everything, the complete thing. That's what, it's a lifelong study. You're going to have to be a student <laughs> for the rest of it. You could, you could choose to be. I am. Okay, the other way that you communicate, one way is listening, which we all need to work on because we don't listen very well. We don't hear very well we don't understand very well we don't clarify very well we don't stop very well we don't wait very well <laughs> okay one way is listening which we can all work on and the other way is talking is communication when we're praying and we're talking to God I recommend that you talk out talk out loud but there's other ways that you can but whenever you talk out loud or whenever you write it like it makes it like play-doh it makes it something that you can put on the table and you can you can work around with so there's something about actually speaking it so I would encourage you to learn to speak to the Lord Jesus Christ or to God if you're just getting to know him um, with your voice when you're by yourself so here I am just me and the Lord in my house with you so let's go ahead and get started did I do everything? Okay, normally when I get started, it's difficult for me to even start. So normally I would turn off my volume of my phone and I put these two items here because my phone is the most distracting thing. And I use a timer and set time limits because um, of fear. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord, because of fear. <laughs> That's why. So you, you figure out however you want to do it. So we're going to go over the scripture, we're going to pray, do the prayer, the devotion, which basically is, this is what a devotion is. Get out your Bible, you can't turn it the right way, you get out your Bible, you read and you listen, and then you talk to him, and you do that for five minutes. So you can talk to him for three minutes or five minutes or one minute or two sentences, talk to Jesus, talk to God. And then try to listen to God. That's what a devotion is. And the goal is for you to do a devotion on your own every day. 
I usually try to do too much, so it's not surprising that I'd be trying to do too much now. So we'll start with the scripture, which is in Acts, Acts chapter 20, verse 18 through 24. Okay, so we're starting in the middle as usual. Acts chapter 20, verse 18, and we're talking about Paul, who was once named Saul, who was a missionary, he's, and he's the author. Well, God was the author, but God used him to write a lot of the Old Testament. So he's a very good example of what we're doing. So um, please get out your own Bible and read it in your own version. I'm reading NIV, but any food is good food in my opinion. You just got to eat, so... Okay, when they arrived, who is we? From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, okay, so the elders from Ephesus, from the church, when they arrived, he said to them, so we got to figure out what we're talking about here. You know, this is what Paul said, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came into the providence of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but I have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, uh-oh, let's focus, shall we? Compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Okay, so that's a lot to chew on for missions. And so the first thing I recommend is that we, you know, kind of look at it and think on it and chew on it. So for our, for our work today, let's figure out what I'm doing. Okay, the first thing is, is the Bible is the Word of God and it is living bread. So we're just going to start by chewing it up a little bit. So we're going we're gonna to do that together. So we've already done part of this here. Okay, we've talked about who Paul is. Okay, so this talks about what he did and how he did it. Okay, he said to them, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you. So for us, everything we do is an example. So everything that he did, they saw everything. So his life was consistent all the time. All right, from the dirt, first day I came into the providence. Oh, so I'm going to look for my manna today and see, I probably he's on the other Popcorn words. Butter, the bread is buttered on the other side. Okay, Paul says, I served the Lord with great humility. Well, that's a good one. I could certainly work on my humility. Great humility. So how do we... Serving is rather presumptuous. It's not only humility, it's great humility. I guess we're putting pink on it instead of butter. Okay, so that's what Paul did. He served the Lord with great humility and with tears in the midst of severe testing. So there was trials. That's what he had. Trouble, trouble, trouble. By the plots of my Jewish opponents. Okay, so there was people. There's only two types of people now. Well, it's actually the lost and the saved. But at that time there was, um, so I won't click the pen, I'm sorry. There was um, the chosen of God, the Jewish people, and the Gentiles, those who were not chosen by God. So fortunately, we all have been chosen now, and you can receive the gift of eternal life by um, exercising the will that God gave you. Okay, I serve the Lord with great humility and with tears in the midst of severe testing. Okay, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you but have taught you publicly and from house to house. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so Paul did that. Now, it's not necessary that we all 
are called, I'm clicking again, or need to do it both, but we all should be able to give an account of the hope that is in us. We all should be able to explain it. And so if you can't do it with words, then you could do it in writing and you could just by start by doing it badly. <clears throat> so you could write down your testimony. And Paul has done that in the Old Testament. Excuse me, in the New Testament, Paul, you can read the accounts of Paul sharing his testimony of how God found him. Okay, it's called the Damascus, where he was on the Damascus Road. I forget the name of the road, but I'm sure Paul remembers when God knocked him off of his donkey, his animal. Oh boy, distraction, 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 distraction. Knocked him off of his donkey and said to him, he was blinded, and he said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul said, who are you? And the voice said, I am Jesus, who you have, why do you kick so hard against the goads? Anyways, that's Paul's testimony. I was wondering what yours was. Okay, I have my testimony in my pocket. I have my testimony in my pocket, so I'm ready with the gospel presentation, but you don't have to do it that way. So you're, I always challenge you. Okay, I cha you could write it to, I challenge you. I challenge you. Wait a minute. Do I have the worst possible view here? <laughs> I challenge you to write down your test, a two-minute testimony, and send it to me. Penny underscore Nelson at yahoo.com. Because you write down your testimony of how God found you. And it's just for me. I won't share it unless I ask you, but I like to collect testimonies. And I love, I love, love, love to hear how God got a hold of people because he does it all kinds of different ways. He certainly didn't knock me off an animal, but you probably heard my testimony before. Okay, so let's get to the praying part, shall we? This is why the video turns 20 minutes in no time. Okay, so at this part of the video, I challenge you to pray out loud by yourself. So I'm going to set my timer for three minutes, and I'm going to pray for you and for I, and then I'm going to challenge you to turn off the video and pray out loud for pick your poison as long as long as you want to or you can but i'm going to pray for 3 minutes so first of all i have to really calm down and relax and rest because i've noticed that about myself i like to i like to i sure do like to talk that's for sure let's get started turn it on there we go good morning lord thank you Bless your name. Praise you. Gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did have a story that Rochelle, an account of Rochelle giving something to her daughter, and it was not received with gratitude. And that is one of the first lessons is we need to learn to receive all things with gratitude and thank it from your, from your hand. So when someone gives you something, the appropriate and proper response and your trained response is when someone gives you something, you say, thank you. <laughs> Not, why didn't you get me ice cream? <laughs> or whatever else might pop into your head. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Lord, please help me to slow down and calm my mind down and lay everything down. I picture them all like... Um, chips like not 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 potato chips like bingo chips like tiddlywinks like um, poker chips everything in my mind is like a chip not me this physical body the house that I'm in the husband that you trusted me to be married to the children that you allowed me to birth the parents that you um, allowed me to be their daughter the the neighbors, the, all the stuff that you asked me to take care of. And I picture every single thing. And you've, you've allowed me to hold all these um, things. And I open my hands and I surrender them all to you. Josiah, my son, his future, my future, my expectations, my hopes, me, 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 everything about me, 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 me,
and I trust you. I believe that's what you have all power and authority. How quick I am to forget. I think that sorting these uh, poker chips, which I'm not playing poker. I'm not playing a game, Lord. I, I, I surrender. No games. I guess there are cultures and strategies and unwritten rules and mm, scenarios, scripts games expectations the way things seem to go in certain cultures lord i pray for my friend god i pray for my friend lord i lift up my friend the person who is here lord i pray for them lord i lift them up to you i pray you bless them i pray you open their spiritual eyes you open their spiritual ears you soften their heart you soften my heart you you speak to us today through your word help me could you could you could you use me to train people how to do your mission that's what aren't we all responsible for that oh boy if in, if in 22 minutes i had to give you all that you needed to know to go and do it to, to be a decide go 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 you know enough Go do something in Jesus' name. That's the 10-second version. Receive Jesus. Receive. That's what it's. It's simple. That's what Jesus is God. He is Lord. Do you bow? Now go and tell other people he's the king. <laughs> and tell them, the bridge is out. The bridge is out. The bridge is out. This life is short. The bridge is out. You're in danger. Did you want to talk about it? <laughs> Did you want to respond to the only one who can actually save you, whether you're driving 80 miles an hour towards the bridge or if you've driven over the cliff, if you're in the water floating down the river, um, God can still save you. Would you cry out to him? Would you stop, stop and turn to God <laughs> in Jesus name? Okay, let me see what else mission training I can teach you today. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so for um, Vacation Bible School this year, I was in charge of, uh, I was in charge of, God allowed me to, he asked me to, I did the missions training for the VBS, so I stay with the material that I was given, but I also add on a little bit, so I'm going to go over the, some of the stuff that I went over with the kids, which are like a main concept and scriptures to go with it, but this is the last day, so it has it has a lot of stuff with it. So if, um, all right, let's just go over the main words that I had. Number five was share. So that's what we're doing now. We are, we are going to share. You know enough, you can go share. You can do it badly. God will help you. You're going to have to ask him. You're going to need faith to do it. Just go ahead and get started. <laughs> okay. The first word was mission. That's what we're defining today. What is the mission? Number two is faith, because you're going to need faith to do it. You're not going to, because you can't do it. You're going to need God. The third thing is, is you really need to understand forgiveness, in my opinion, because you really can't receive grace until you understand the law and sin and all of those things. So um, you're going to need to apply the forgiveness that God has extended to you. The fourth thing is, is you have to understand repent and receive because so many things you have to receive, you can't earn them. And then the fifth thing is share. So let me just go over some of the pre-K definitions that I have um, according to definitions according to Penny. Okay, so what is a mission? Well, all of us, God has called all of us to do a job, and the job is go ye, <laughs> is to go. You're supposed to go and share somehow. So God's called all of us, okay? Did we get up to the part? Yeah, well, that's after that. Mission is a job to do. Our job as Christ followers is to go and tell others about the love and hope in Jesus Christ. God created each person, that's you and me, and all people, that's mankind, all people are made in his image with value and purpose. Okay, so you have a purpose, you have a job to do, there's um, an overarching, like there's a, a main job to do, like the same job is for all humankind, and then there's a specific job that you have to do. 
So you're going to need to ask God. Your spe- That's what I ask people. Did you know God has a plan for you? Do you know what it is? What is it? <laughs> so, okay. So for, we all, you always have to start with sin. You cannot understand grace. You cannot understand mercy until you've understood sin. There are physical laws. There are spiritual laws. There are moral laws. Um, there are laws that, that's what gravity is is a law that's in effect. So it doesn't matter if you believe in it or not. Gravity is gravity. So there's there's spiritual and moral laws as well. Okay. So sin is breaking God's laws. Okay. God has laws. He's the boss. He's the creator, and he designed things. So there's um, like moral moral laws as well, and other things. But say for example, you don't care for the law of gravity, and you step off of a building. There's consequences, and there's consequences for, for all the other laws as well. Okay, what is eternal? It goes on forever, and it does not end. You, my friend, are an eternal being in a temporary vessel, and you will go on forever. Okay. Prayer, we already talked about that, is communicating, talking and listening. We listen by reading the Bible, and also we listen by being still because God's is able to speak to your conscience, and he's God's spirit. That's what Paul was talking about in here. He was talking compelled by the spirit. Now compelled by the spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. So by the spirit of God, God gave him some specific directions of what he wanted him, what he wanted him, Paul, Saul, to do that day. And we need to ask God, what does he want us to do this day? Okay, your earth suit, we talked about that, is your is your um your earth suit is your flesh it's made of dirt and it's filled with your spirit and when you invite the holy spirit to live you invite god to live there then god's spirit is living there as well so that gets a little more uh, not easy word pictures but who we are is the spiritual man okay so who you are is a spiritual man that's going to last eternally i'm going to buzz through the rest of them but it's really too as usual that's what i'm cram feeding you cereal for breakfast just open up your mouth and let me shovel it in that's what maybe I could just hook you up to an IV or a feeding bag but I'm trying to I'm trying to chop up this food just like a baby bird a baby robin I'm just trying to shovel it in there Uh, so you could pray about it okay faith you have to have faith that's what you can't none of this can be done without faith in God you it can't be done it's impossible you have to have faith okay so faith is like belief and trust it's both okay because it requires belief 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 in action it's belief in action God keeps his word and does not lie The promise in God's word, the Bible, are dependable. So God's word, what he said, he is going to do, and we can depend on it. So you could know, like, one of my illustrations is like a chair. Like, you can know what a chair is for. You can know that a chair holds body weight. You can um, know all of those things, but you actually have to put your weight, that's what, put your faith in the chair. You have to rest your whole being and trust God, okay? So we know about chairs, but God's word, God's chair, God's word never falls apart, okay? It might seem like it sometimes, but it's not true. God is totally dependable. The Bible and the Bible is totally dependable. Which that's what there's a lot of laws. There's laws in effect that we can that's what I don't know how to actually say that one. But that's why we need to know it. Okay. Forgive. We need to understand forgiveness. Jesus forgave us. Okay, and we need to cancel or let go of all the debts of the people around us. Okay, so forgive is cancel or let go of a debt. Repent is turn from and stop. Okay, and that's what we do. First of all, we turn from our sin, from our ways, from all of it. We stop and we turn to God. So stop and turn. Receive is the last one. Um, In order to do any of God's work that he has for you to fulfill any mission, you are going to be have to be able to receive. (laughs) You are going to have to receive you. You cannot do this job without receiving. You can't do it. 
actually God, I guess God will do what he needs to do. Um, he will, but somehow you, your free will plays a role in this. You have a will, okay? So receive is to allow to enter, and that requires a choice. Like if you are going to give me something, I have to open my hand and allow it to come in. So if if you if you shove it in there, that's not that's not you receiving. It's me forcing, which I certainly sometimes wish that my oh, I certainly wish that my force would accomplish things. I found my furry friend. He found, he found the bird feeder. Okay, well, I've been praying for him to come. And here he is, he or she. If he turns around, we can see whether he's a boy or a girl. Let's see. Can't tell. He looks like he might be a girl because I don't see that he has any boy parts, which is the simplified way of, it shouldn't be so complicated. Shouldn't be so complicated. You look down when they're born, they're a boy or a girl. Everything else, okay, now I've gone off the mark. Distraction, distraction. The last thing is share, and that's what step five is, is that we want to give it away. So today, today, I have done my best to give away by form, I wish I could twist this thing the right way. Okay, let's try it. I can, okay, there. Give away. I want to give to you what God has given to me. So thank you for that. Thank you for hanging out. Have I reminded you that I love you? Oh boy, and I'm physically hungry. Physical hunger reminds me that there is spiritual hunger as well. And why in the world that's what, when you're thirsty, it's just not a good idea to go drink antifreeze. When you're hungry, it's not a good idea to go find rat poison. But spiritually, so many times, we, we're just trying to fill that spiritual hunger, and we fill it with all kinds of things, don't we? Fill it with need to control, <laughs> power, money, sex satisfying myself with XYZ, filling my eyes with XYZ, filling my heart, striving, flailing, 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 working, 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 working. Lord, I pray for my friend. Thank you that they hung out, and I pray that you teach them to pray. I pray that you teach them to read your word. I pray that you help them to write their testimony, and I pray that they will go and share. In Jesus' name, amen. And as soon as I post this, it counts as obedience. Do you know God's the one who asked me to do this? So I just do it badly, and once I post it, it counts as obedience. God help me to do better. Amen.